right, well, hello everyone. Um, I'm on my way back, just driving back from Batley. Um, I just want to make a few, just a few reflections because it's been a hell of a day. It's been a very long day and lots has happened. Um, I don't know where to, where to start. Actually, I do know where to start. I just want to say thank you to all the Four Britain members that came out today. And I, honestly, I just love them all so much. I really do. They are the best, the best of people. Um, and they came out from all over the country today to support us in Batley. And I'm so grateful to them all. Uh, they really are the very best of people. So, to start with, there's so, so, so much to get through. There's so much that we... So many things happened today. It's been a really bizarre day. The first thing that happened was we had um, I, I did an interview with a production team. We're making a documentary for Channel Four. Um, we did this in the centre of the centre of Batley, and just absolutely incredible. All the usual tricks that the press do. First of all, immediately hostile, immediately hostile, so unprofessional, immediately hostile. Um, throwing in all the usual sort of trying to trip me up questions. We of course made our own filmed copy of this. And like they've done before, they um, stand in front of our camera. And they did exactly the same thing that's happened before. Asking me out of the blue, out of nowhere, what are you getting so angry for? And then standing in front of my car, it's just unbelievable. Anyway, at the end of it, when the cameras were off and, and all the rest of it, this bloke said that he's a Sikh guy. And he said to me, um, so why do you hate me? And I, I just said, this is so pathetic. It's so pathetic. And the irony, the irony of it, and I did say this to him, the irony of this is that you're the one who hates me. You come here full of prejudice, full of bigotry, full of hate, think you have my measure. You know nothing about me. You're the one who hates me. Um, anyway, through, within the interview, one of the things he said more than once was brown people, that I apparently talk about brown people. And he, he wanted to, I asked him what I've ever said about brown people. And not a phrase I use either. And he said, oh, let's move on. And I said, no, let's not move on, I want to know what I have said, because he told me he'd read I mean, he'd read what I write and he'd watch my videos and so on. I said, why don't you tell me then what I say about brown people? And he said, well, Nigel Farage called you a Nazi. I said, well, what's that got to do with me? I asked you for an example of what I say about brown people. Cannot give me one because I'm, I don't, and I've never used that phrase. Anyway, just typical, absolutely typical, toxic, poisonous press up to all their old tricks. There was a lady there who was listening to all this and a couple of times when I was speaking, she clapped. So afterwards, when I'd finished with them, I went to speak to this lady. She gave me a great big hug and she was tear she was absolutely tearful. She told me about how her granddaughter was raped by these scumbags. Um, how her, you know, her, the, 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 the awful, awful experiences of living with all of this. And we sat down and chatted to, with her for a while. Um, then we took off to our first place. For, we went to three little spots. And every, <laughs> meanwhile, these stand up the racism losers were descending on the centre of Batley, which I, I had long left and had no intention of going back to. As we went to three different spots around the constituency. So the first one we went to, we just put up a banner, hand, hand out some leaflets, stick our leaflet up on the, um, what do they call it, lampposts, those things, you know, they, 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 George Galloway and Labour and the Tories, we put our leaflet up there as well. And in the first place we went to, the English Democrats were there. Now I have never said anything about the English Democrats, I've got no issue with them at all. Um, but for some reason, you, one of the guys, I, I don't know who he wasn't the candidate, was speaking through a megaphone and really had a go at us and I didn't really understand why. Um, he said something, I didn't quite catch exactly what was said, but he said something about Sharia and then he looked directly at us and said, which other, peop other parties don't talk about. I was so confused. So I didn't know what that was for, what, what warranted this sort of little 
attack at us by the English Democrats, but regardless. Um, so we moved on to a couple of, couple of different places. I met a man who um, told me about, he works with a lot of the kids in and around, the, around West Yorkshire. Um, kids that are raped, and kids that have been raped by these gangs, and I, you know, you, you, you think you are hardened to this stuff, but still, it's like I said to him, still, even though you know it, it's still like a punch in the stomach every time. I mean, stories about uh, a 12-year-old raped by seven Pakistanis, a five-year-old raped by several of them. I mean, it's good. He said to me, it's not weekly or monthly, it's daily. It's daily that kids are raped by these Pakistani gangs in West Yorkshire. Um, it's, it's almost too much to take. And then you have this Antifa crew in the centre of Batley. The police were absolutely everywhere. The was, place was flooded with police. And you think, I, you know, the, the number of people I speak to who terrible crimes are committed against them, they ring the police and there's no police. There's just no response. And I know this of old. And yet, any sign of the far right, and they're absolutely everywhere. And this Antifa lot in the centre of Batley, making out like I'm some sort of devil, they don't listen to the stories about these kids being gang raped. They don't, they don't listen and they don't care. Um, and that's what they're defending. You know, they're attacking someone who is fighting to end the gang rape of young girls. That's their, it's just the, the moral inversion, the absolute upside down morals here is almost just too much to take. It really is. We live in an upside down world. Um, and, and evil is, is truly at the top at the moment. And we are fighting, it's like I said to this, this lovely lady in, in, uh, in the town square this morning, we are up against sheer evil, and we are. And evil has no scruples. And that's why it's, well, that's why it gets so many victories, that's why it has so many wins, because they have no morals, no boundaries, there's nothing they won't do. Um, and that is what we're up against. And, and, and I just, you know, for Antifa and the, that usual anti-racist rubbish. Well, first of all, where are they when white white people are attacked for being white? Uh, nowhere to be seen. This is not, nothing to do with racial equality or anything like it. Um, what they've done today, actually, is advertise for Britain in the centre of Batley. And for that, I'd really like to thank them. But this is, what they are defending is rotten, absolutely rotten. And to attack me, to attack those of us who are trying to stop and expose and confront, just to bring an end to rape and horrific violent crime. And they will do everything in their power to stop us. There can only be one conclusion. There's only one end result there. And that is that they are defending violence and rape. And they are making sure that more and more of this happens. That is on their conscience. I was going to say, well, I won't say conscience because they clearly don't have a conscience. Um, but to these, these so-called journalists as well, they're defending evil and they are attacking decent people like the members of For Britain attacking us for trying to stop horrific, horrific crimes being committed largely against children. So that was the day today. Um, on my way home now to see my dogs, can't wait. I just, again, oh yeah, we, <laughs> one, one last thing. We did find George Galloway's office today, it's great. <laughs> I see he was on his his battle bus doing a little tour of the mosques it's absolutely shame absolutely shameless and, and I it's one of the thing I said to, to one of the people today is that, you know they they are 
I mean, even King Kim Ledbetter. I mean, look what happened. She was basically run out of town yesterday by Muslims because they don't want her because she's a lesbian. And even while they are attacking her for being gay, she still defended them. It's it's absolutely unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. And I want to know where all the gay rights campaigners are in condemning this. I want to know where they are. No, it's silent, silent. The own Joneses of the world will have nothing to say about this. But I just don't understand the the cognitive dissonance of still defending people while they're attacking you for your sexuality. It's absolutely mind-blowing. But they have so shamelessly sought out and only sought out the Muslim vote in battling that it, it blows my mind. Muslims are 20% of the population there, meaning 80% are not. That 80% needs to get off its backside and go out and vote. And vote for me. That's what they need to do. And, and there seems to be this, it won't, you know, it's, it's hopeless. Look at all the politicians vying for the Muslim vote. Well, not all of them. And there's 80% of Batley can go out and, and trounce that 20%. And they really ought to. All it will take is to go down to the local community centre and take a box on a bit of paper. That's all it will take to bring an end to all this. Um, well, okay, well, thanks everyone again. I, and I mean it sincerely when I say we are really are the best of people for Britain members. You're standing up to sheer evil. And you're doing it against all the odds. And I'm just truly grateful to you all. Okay, thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of the weekend.